G'day guys, Vindicator Jones here and welcome to my new series devoted to the venerable yet often misunderstood Fertilance. I have decided to break up the Fertilance video series across multiple videos to help focus on certain aspects while keeping the duration to a watchable level. At the moment I have three videos planned but I'm flying by the seat of my pants here so this might change. Anyway, getting straight into it. This first video is purely about setup weapons, components and settings to get the most out of your Fertilance. So this video is directed more to new pilots or those having trouble setting up their FDL. I'll get into how to fly the FDL more effectively in my next video. Sorry guys. Now I'm not going to tell you how you have to load up your FDL as you should always fly with what you feel comfortable with. But I am going to suggest some essential elements and some points you should keep in the back of your mind when putting together your build. Use this as a base to build your FDL to your preferred style. Here are some essential elements you should have on your FDL. The most common mistake is taking out your FDL too early with lower rated modules. And this is where most pilots tend to give up. The most important modules are A-rated thrusters, A-rated power plant and an A-rated distributor. If you do not have these yet, then be patient and work towards it. Try and keep life support and sensors D-rated as this will have less impact on your mass. This is the foundation of the FDL and essential for getting the most out of the FDL. Try and run an A-Class shield generator, but your priority should always be the other three systems. Reason is, the FDL shields are already fantastic as it is. A 5D shield generator will provide 378 megajoules of shield power without boosters. And a 5A shield generator will provide 468 megajoules. So there really isn't that much in it. Often the shield generator is what you would want to compromise first before any other systems if you need power. FSD is important for obvious reasons but you can upgrade this over time while you operate your FDL in a local systems res site. Now I'm going to assume you're wanting to use your FDL for bounty hunting and generally blowing stuff up to make the Benjamins. Or should I say the Hudsons? But I don't know. Anyway, here is a good internal compartment slowdown. If you're primarily going to be operating in a few systems very close together, or in a single system, then place two 4A shield cell banks into the two class 4 slots. Put a class 2A fuel scoop into the class 2 slot, and a 1A FSD interdictor into the class 1 spot. If you are intending to travel further, then swap a single class 4A SCB for a class 4A fuel scoop and place a 2A SCB into the class 2 slot. Just be careful when fuel scooping as the FDL heats up faster than a stick of butter in a microwave oven. So be careful, watch your distance to the star and keep an eye on that heat cage. The FDL is a power hungry beast. It eats through power faster than a hipster eats through fresh tail from a farmer's market. So you will rarely have enough power to run everything. So you're going to have to compromise on a few things to maximize the potential of the FDL. Utility slot should always contain at least one kill warrant scanner to make more Hudsons. Sorry everyone, I'm sticking with it now. And a chaff launcher and a heat sink launcher. If you're not interested in using heat sinks, then load up on another chaff launcher and turn it off in the power panel. Use this as a spare if your first one runs out. Fill the rest of the other slots with shield boosters, power permitting, and any other items you feel you will need. As for weapons, this is a more personal choice, and you should use what you feel most comfortable with. Personally, I run four class two pulses and a class four PA. For me, there is nothing better than sneaking up to an unsuspecting enemy, lining up a shot and firing. Yeah, take it you dirty, naughty little ship. You know you like it. Okay, that just got weird, didn't it? Sorry, anyway, just fly with whatever works for you. Just make sure you keep it within your power budget. Using the Coriolis shipbuilding tool to help you set up your build and balance its power usage really is so essential. See the link below in the description. And now to deal with the FDL's Achilles heel, power management. Okay, we all know the FDL is underpowered, so let's just deal with that and set up some priorities. Remember, if you're running two SCBs, disable one of them so you don't overtax your power system. When you've used up one SCB, disable it and activate the other. Do the same with multiple chaff and heatsink systems. I have five levels of power priorities that I think make a lot of sense, especially now with power plant damage affecting power output. Level one power priority, thrusters, power distributor and shield generator. Level two priorities, all weapons and life support. Level three, all shield boosters, scanners, chaff, ECM, in fact anything in your util slots and any scanners. Level 4, all your SCB if you're running them. Level 5, FSD, fuel scoop, 
cargo hatch, disable it, let's face it, you're never going to use it, and FSD interdictor. If you can, power levels permitting, add your FSD to level 1 for those emergency escapes. Nothing is worse when you're trying to jump and your FSD is powered down. This allows essential systems to stay online while others are slowly powered down if your power plant is being attacked. In PvP, this is essential after 1.4. Now you're ready to take off and bring vengeance to your enemies. Okay, wait, 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 I hear you. What about armor, Jones, you idiot? And what about adding armor components instead of SCBs? Because I hate SCBs, that's them! Well, I'm going to come clean here. I've done a lot of testing with military-grade armor installed and standard armor. And I hate to admit it, but the truth is, armor doesn't seem to really affect the FDL's handling. I know. I was utterly shocked too. Speed is only slightly reduced by about 8 meters per second and thrusters seem to be only marginally affected. I've decided to do a more complete video on armor later in the series and spend more time doing more in-depth testing. Personally, I would suggest once your shields have dropped to run unless you're certain you can destroy your target. Your hull should only be used for damage soaking in an emergency to get you out of trouble. But I do recognize some commanders like to play this way. So really, do what works best for you. There is no real right or wrong way. I'm just here to point out certain facts about the FDL so that you can make more informed decisions on how to set up your FDL. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it has given you some good ideas about how to set up your Fertilance. But as always, only use this as a guide. You should always set up your ship in a way that best suits your playstyle. If you don't like SCBs, don't use them. If you want to add armor, go for it. I'm just giving you a good base from which to work from. In my next video, I'm going to discuss in detail how to maximize your maneuverability in the FDL using flight assist off techniques and also my preferred thruster technique and how to effectively use the FDL in combat. Anyway, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching, this is Vindicator Jones signing off, have an awesome day, and I'll see you out there in the big black.